So, Father, we make this a declaration today that before you even ask, our answer will be yes. So, Father, we stand in your presence now as a church, as a community of faith. And we, again, re-surrender our hearts and our wills to you. And, Lord, we understand that the instruction that you gave yesterday might be different in a new season. Last week, we celebrated that we're going into a new season. So in this new season, Father, we again re-surrender our hearts, we re-surrender our wills, and we say, if you send us, we will go. Whatever you call us to do, we are willing. So as a church and as a people, Father, we again say, yes, we will go. And we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say amen. 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 Give somebody a high five around you. Let them know you're glad to see them this morning. test. So it's good to be with everyone this morning. You're glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hey, good to see so many friends and family. If you're visiting with us today, it's your first time or your first time in a long time, we just want to uh, connect with you, have a record of your visit. So if you don't mind texting the word new to uh, the number that'll come up on your screen, or you can scan the barcode on the chair in front of you. Um, and just hit the connect card on there. And that'll just give us a register of your visit so that we can just know that you're worshiping today with us. Amen? Amen. So today we have a special privilege of hearing a message from a dear friend of mine. And uh, obviously she's been a part of our church for a long time, but Miss Cheryl Weaver is gonna come and bring the word. So give her a hand as she comes. And besides her ministering today, it happens to be her birthday. So happy birthday. And I just want to say I love this lady. And uh, she has always been honest with me, forthright with me, not afraid to tell the truth. And she's been a leading prophetic voice with what God's saying and doing in the spirit. So we're honored to have her oversee our prayer ministry here at Hope City. Honored to have her serve as an elder at our church, and I know you're going to be blessed with what she has to share today. So thank you thank for you so your much. willingness. Thank you. So, you guys ready to uh, receive? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, God's ready to pour it out. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I just encourage us every time that we come. We are gathered here. In the name of Jesus, we come to minister first and foremost to him because we love him. And so when you walk in these doors on a Sunday or at any other time that we're having a service, let that be your first priority. Come to love on Jesus. And then we can love on each other out of that overflow. But it's also a time that you should come every single time to hear what he is saying to you in every message he's speaking something to you and then i would go so far as to say he's not just speaking to you but he's speaking to us that there's a word for me individually there's a word for you individually but there's a word for us corporately, as a family, as one, right? And so we also need to have ears that can hear what he's saying to us as a house, okay? So that when we move, we are moving all in the same direction because where there's unity, there's life. Where there's division and strife, there's death, okay? I want you to hear me. That's a word, where there's unity and oneness, there's life. The blessing of life flows from that place. Where there's division and strife and disunity, we're out of unity, we're out of oneness, it brings the curse of death, okay? So, today, as you're hearing, don't just sit there. Be a participant. 
That's the more you put into this, the more you're going to get out of it. You know, I had the privilege um, at the beginning of September for the women's ministry to bring a word. And I don't ever want to just come up here and talk to you. I want to hear what he's saying for you. And a lot of time is spent in prayer, listening and trying to get his heart because that's what's going to change us. That's what's going to help us. I can get up here and give you my opinion about a lot of things, and it doesn't really mean it's going to change anything. But it's what God knows, and it's what God thinks, and it's what God says that brings the shift and the change in me and in you and in the house, okay? So um, I had the privilege of ministering, and I heard, I heard a word. And then someone, I believe it was Paula, one of our other elders, said, this word needs to go to the congregation. And I remember thinking, Lord, if you want it to be so, you'll orchestrate it. And the next thing I know, here I stand. (laughs) And he has confirmed that two or three times, even this week, that it's okay to give the, the same word that I gave at the ladies' meeting. So often, we run from place to place, from teaching to teaching, From YouTube, you know, video to another, and books to books, and conventions, and and, and all kinds of things. Chewing and chewing, but we don't chew on it. We just keep taking in more and more and more and more, but it doesn't have a chance to get down on the inside of us. So I'm hoping that if you were here at the ladies' meeting, that you will not disengage, that you will take this as a time to further chew on it. To really get it down in our heart because I believe it's imperative for the day and the hour that we're in. For the new season that we're in. God is on the move. I'm telling you prophetically, there is movement in the spirit and I don't want to get left behind. I don't want you to get left behind. He doesn't want me to get left behind. He doesn't want you to get left behind. And he doesn't want the house to get left behind. The spirit is moving, and we must move with him. Remember the Israelites? This is how they left the land of Egypt, where they were held in captivity and bondage, where they were stuck. And what they did is they followed the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And where the spirit of the Lord went, they followed. What are we called to do? Follow, follow Jesus, follow Jesus. Where he's moving, we need to be moving with him. But I'm telling you, we can't do that if we're stuck. So when he gave me this message, I, I saw a picture in my mind's eye, and I saw a, a person stuck in like a block of cement, and the cement was dry. Try as hard as they could They could not get out of that block of cement. They were stuck. And I know that he said to me, there are many of my children who are stuck. As hard as they want to not be stuck, they can't get free. They're they're stuck in this cement. It's going to take a heavy hammer to break up the cement. Well, God's word is like a hammer. So I'm believing that as we listen to what he has to say today, I am believing and I'm prophesying and decreeing over us that we are going to get unstuck. I also had a vision of someone sinking in like quicksand. The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. And no matter how hard you try, you can't get out. You're stuck in the mud. You're stuck in the mire. Right? You need someone to come in and help pull you out. Hello, I'm here to help pull you out with the help of Holy Spirit, all right? So um, ask yourself this, does my life reflect my love for Jesus? I mean, did you pay attention to the words that we sing? Don't just come in here and sing them, really mean them, really pay attention to what we're singing. This is the decade of the pay, it's the decade of the mouth, so it's very, very important How we're using our mouth, even in song. So does my life reflect my love for Jesus? If he asks me to go, will I go? 
If he asks me to leave my job, will I leave my job? If he asks me to give my car away to somebody, will I do it? If he asks me to go next door and just give a word, tell somebody about Jesus, will I do it? Will I say yes? Honestly. Because this is just between you and God. Will I say yes? He already knows. And if you can't, it's okay to say no. And then get to work with him to make the change. Hopefully we're going to do that by getting unstuck. If he sends me, am I free to go? No matter how much I want to go. If I'm stuck, I can't. <laughs> have you been feeling stuck? On, honestly, have you been feeling stuck in any way? Are you stuck in a habit that you can't break? No matter how bad you want to, you just can't break it. Whether it's drug addiction, whether it's alcoholism, maybe it's gambling. Maybe it's a sexual addiction or pornography. Maybe it's gossiping and you just don't even know how to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's depression and you don't know how to get out of that dark place. Anxiety, worry and fear and you don't know how to stop it. You hate the way it makes you feel. You don't want to be here, but you don't know how to stop it. You're stuck. How's your relationship with Jesus? What's your prayer time like? Is it a struggle? Is it a struggle to stay focused when you're talking with him? And it's not all just talking. It's listening, too, because there's this communication, there's this giving and receiving, there's this intimacy. I mean, how's your time with him? How's it, what's it like when you're reading the word? Is it just like a bunch of words and you're just checking off the list and okay, I've read, I've read, maybe you don't even, maybe you don't even read. Maybe this is the only time that you hear the word is when you come on a Sunday Are you just going through the motions? Do you feel like you're in a wilderness and it's dry? You don't know what to say to God? What's your worship like when you're not here? Do you know that if we all worship him, sing our song to him, it doesn't even have to be just telling him, I love you, I love you, I I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. That's not a written song. I'm just loving on him. I'm just loving on him. If we all did that in our time daily, when we came here corporately and we began to worship, don't be surprised. If the roof comes off in the yep. spirit and you begin to hear the angels singing yes. with us, yes. I've heard them. Yep. And if you ever hear them, it changes everything. Yep. When you realize that you're worshiping with the saints and the angels in heaven, mm -hmm. it's different. So this is a time to just do some checking to see, am I stuck? When was the last time? That you used your giftings, what, what God has given you. And if you're a believer, you have his gifts inside of you. He gave you something to share with those around you. So when was the last time that you used your gifts or your talents for someone else? Because it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not. If we get our priority right, it's about Jesus. And he said, if you love me, if you, that's the first commandment, love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. With everything in me, 
love me. And then, equally important, love others. So the purpose today is, hey, let's get unstuck. And let's stir up some stuff. All right? All right. So when I was listening... And then I'm, I'm going to pray here in a minute. But when I was listening, this is what I heard. Too many distractions. Too many voices. Yes. Too much activity. Too many noises. And I'm going to repeat it because I do believe it's important. He's telling us these are some of the things that are causing us to be stuck. Okay? And then you have to sit with him and decide... What are these things in my life? And let's get to work on them, God. Mm-hmm. Too many distractions. Too many voices. Those voices are opinions of man. It is more important that you get still and quiet before God and hear what he has to say rather than to hear every opinion from everyone else. And often God's the last one we run to. Yeah. Yeah. We run to everyone else. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And I'm not saying that counsel's bad. It's out of order if we haven't gone to Jesus. So too many distractions, too many voices, too much activity, too many noises. So today we're going to get quiet. We're going to hear the Lord. And we're going to come into agreement with whatever he says. So, I've been sent here, and I said yes, to stir it up. What? What am I to stir up? I'm not here to trouble you, (laughs) so I'm not here to stir up trouble. There are three areas that we're going to stir up today. We're going to stir up your faith. God has given every single one of us a measure of faith, and we're going to stir it up. So that you can truly believe that he is who he says he is. He can do what he says he can do. That you are who he says you are. And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Number two, we're going to stir up the fire. We're going to stir up the embers of passion and love for Jesus and for others. And we're going to ask him to blow his breath upon those embers. And we're going to stir up the gifts that he's placed within you so that you can go in his strength, in his power, and his joy to serve others. All right? We're going to release freedom so that we are free to move. Because, again, I say the spirit is on the move. And I want to stay up with them. I want you to stay up with them. Let this be the motto of the house. We leave no one behind. That's right. When you see someone struggling, reach out a hand. Don't be too busy and don't be too good. Grab them by the hand. And take them with you. But we leave no one behind. That's right. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord, that you are here in our midst. Thank you, Jesus, that you care about every single one of us and you care about this house. I thank you, Father God, that you care when we get stuck and you have a solution, that you are here to break us free. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom to move with you, Lord. There's freedom. I am asking by faith and believing ahead of time, Father God, That you are going to stir up in us your faith, your fire, and the gifts that you've placed within us. That you are going to unstick our feet. You're going to pull us out of the muck and the mire. You're going to pull us out of that which we're stuck in and don't know how to get out. You're, You're here to help us. That your heart is for us. So Holy Spirit, be free. Be free. Give us ears that can hear what you're saying to us as people and to us as a house. To those online, receive, receive. It's time to get unstuck in Jesus' name. 
So, number one, we're going to stir up faith. Let's look at Hebrews. Now, everything I did today is going to be out of the New Living Translation, okay? Um, I like them all. I have a mountain of them all around me when I'm studying. But this is the one that kind of stuck to me. So I'm, we're going to read out of Hebrews 12. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Do we have scriptures? Oh, they're up. Sweet. Okay. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith... Let us, that means we have to do it, <laughs> let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. I want to stop there. And I want to say I read this also out of the Passion Translation, and it gives it a little bit differently. So remember, this one was every weight. Let us strip off every weight Every heavy thing, every burden, every sorrow, everything that would weigh us down makes us heavy in our spirit. And then in the tra Passion Translation, it says, we must let go of every wound that has pierced us. So that gives us a different perspective here. So it's not just heavy burdens, but it can even be offenses. It can be rejections. It can be things that people have said about you behind your back. Um, it could be every wound throughout our entire life. So I would say to you today that if God highlights something to you, write it down because we're going to deal with it today, okay? So every wound. And then um, in the Christian Standard Bible, it says, let us lay aside every hindrance. So we've got every weight, every wound, every hindrance. And when I think of hindrance, I think of things that tether your feet down and I can't move or the block. It's a hindrance. It's stopping me. It's keeping me. It could be distractions. It could be pleasures. It could be any number of things that would be hindering you or distracting you from moving when you need to move. So let's go on with that scripture. So let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Each of us has an area in our life or multiple areas that we really struggle with that are trigger points for us, that we are more apt to fall into sin than other areas. So for me personally, that would be the area of rejection. That's been an area that I've struggled with, and I have to stay on guard. But, you know, it doesn't have to. It could be an addiction. I, for 20-something years, had a cigarette addiction that I could not quit. I don't care how hard I tried. I couldn't do it. I tried and tried and tried and could not do it. I'm free. I'm free. He set me free. So it, does, it could be an addiction. It, it, could be, it could be anything, okay? Maybe you're struggling with pornography. Come on, it's a big problem, and it's not just men. It's got to go. It's going to stop you from moving, and we've got to move with him. I'm telling you, I feel the urgency on it. So we have to even come to the place. God asked me to give them up, and he did tell me, the cigarettes, and he did tell me, you don't have to. And I'm here to tell you today, you don't have to. And he even told me that he wasn't going to be mad at me if I said no. Remember the song is, will you say yes? I said yes. And he said to me, what I've got for you, you can't do both. You can't have the cigarettes, and you can't have what I have for you. But what I've got for you is so good, and it's so beautiful. But it's your choice, and I'm going to love you anyway. I'm going to love you anyway. And is it going to hurt you? To follow Jesus is going to cost you everything. Do you hear me? It cost him everything, and it's going to cost us everything. And I had to be willing. Now, I was so addicted. 
that I went through withdrawals, mm. and I, I, cigarettes to nicotine, and I would shake, and I was sick to my stomach. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. All I did was watch the clock. Oh, gosh, it's been five more minutes. That's agony. Mm -hmm. One of the words in one of these translations, the Greek word agony, it says, let go of every wound. This is out of the passion that has pierced us. The sin we so easily fall into, then we'll be able to run life's marathon race or obstacle course. And that is a Greek word agona. And it means agony or conflict. When you are battling that sin and God's asking you to give it up, you say, yes, I'm here to tell you there's going to be a time of agony. Not forever. I'm no longer in agony. But I had a choice. Am I really serious? Right. When I said yes to God, am I really serious? Because there's going to be a testing yes. to see if I'm really all in. Yep. If I really meant what I said. And I was, I was really sick. And I remember, I don't know how long it was, but I remember hitting that floor. And I remember with everything in me, if I die, I die. But I say yes to you, God. And I am begging you to help me. If you could just help me to forget that I was ever a smoker. And I'm so sorry, God, because I started doing it in rebellion to my mom. So I repented for rebellion. Sometimes we have to go back to the root cause of where it started and repent for that thing. The next thing, I don't know how long it was, but he said to me, and I even went and got meds to help me, Zyban, or I don't know what it was called, but I took some meds to help with the withdrawals. And um, he said to me, you've been forgetting to take your medicine. And I'm like, what? And he goes, go count your pills. And I had been free for six weeks. He had caused me to forget. Yep. I'm here to tell you that when you love Jesus and you pray to him, that you talk to him, he hears you. Yes. Yes, he, does. he hears you. And he answers you. And I didn't even know that he had answered me. And it was six weeks in. And he had answered my prayer. And I had been forgetting to take the pills and forgetting I wasn't smoking. Forgetting I was in misery. And I was free. And then came the test. Then came the test. And I remember standing in a giant grocery store. And this was back when they had the cigarettes on the rack right there at the, you know, at the, uh, whatever you call that, let's check out. Yeah, and I heard a voice say to me, but God had already prepared me. And he said, the enemy's going to come and he's going to tell you the same lie. What's he always tell you? And I said, he always tells me one won't hurt. And so he said, remember that. And you get your response ready. What are you going to tell him? And I said, one does hurt. So he did that day in standing in giant. I heard him so loud and clear, go ahead, buy a pack, you can afford it, all you need is one, and it's going to be, excuse me, it's going to be like an orgasm in your lungs, <laughs> that's what I heard, <laughs> and you can throw the rest of them away, you don't even have to smoke the whole thing, just take a hit, I heard it, and the battle was on. I mean the most intense battle of my life. But this is why we have to know the promises that are in here. Right. This is we have to know what he says because he gives us a way out. And you know what I heard? Flee from the sin. Right. Flee. Oh, yeah. Run for your life. Well, I had this cart full of groceries, and I'm like, I didn't care anymore. They can put the groceries away. If the lady standing in front of me don't get out of my way, I'm running because I'm running for my life. There you go. Yep. And there has to come that point that if you're breaking an addiction, you are willing to run for your life. Yep. That you're, otherwise, if it kills me, it kills me. But I'm saying yes to God. Okay? Right. Um, yeah. So let us run with endurance 
It means we can't quit. If I would have quit, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I will tell you that I quit smoking April the 27th, 1999, 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm free. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. And he took all of the gunk out of my lungs, and I stand here completely healed with no ill effects. And I am believing that when you give it to God, if you're suffering from ill effects, that he can take those ill effects and heal you. Body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. How? How do we do this? By keeping our eyes on Jesus. That's the rest of that scripture. Keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. Because of the joy awaiting me, because I'm to imitate him, because of the joy awaiting me, I'll endure the cross. I'll endure the agony. I'll endure the suffering. And I'll disregard the shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all of the hostility that he endured from sinful people. When we look at him and we look at everything he went through, I have not gone through anything like that. My battle with cigarettes, and I've had other battles. I've had other battles. That to me was one of my hardest though to overcome as far as addictions go. But, you know, he's been walking with me through deliverance since I was 17 years old and tried to commit suicide. I wanted out. I didn't want to hurt anymore. I didn't want to hurt anymore. I just wanted to be loved, and I wanted to know that love, that unconditional love, that someone would just love me for me. And the enemy had been telling me my whole life that I was unlovable. That there was something so not right in me that people just could not love me. And I believed that for so long. And I, I, I remember I was so wasted. I was wasted. And I was in the back seat of a car with some friends. And I heard that voice again. And he said, go ahead, open the door. Lean on out. Nobody will ever hurt you again. And I opened that door, and I leaned out, and we were going fast. And I thought I let go. I thought I let go. But the next thing I know, I'm walking into my house. And I was so mad at God. Why? Why? I know he saved me. I'm so thankful today that he did. I have so much life to live, and I have so much to give. But he saved me that night. And I was so angry. Why? Why? Why didn't you just let me go? Why didn't you just let me die? I don't want to hurt anymore. Anybody there? Or has anybody been there? Or know somebody who's there. You know what? He spoke to me. You know what he said? From today on, I want you to start changing the outside. I want you to smile. So when you see me smiling, you'll know why. He told me to. And I've been trying to smile ever since. Does it mean that things are always easy or right? No. But he said, I want you to change the outside and I want you to start smiling because I was a pretty unhappy person. And I was a pretty angry person. You change the outside, Cheryl, and I'm going to change the inside. And that's the day that my deliverance began. And it's been an ongoing journey with Jesus. It's not always been easy. There's been bouts of 
being all alone, of being misunderstood, of being pretty radical. <laughs> and I am. With Jesus, I am. How do you encounter him and not? If you've really encountered him, how do you not? I am madly in love with him. And he is in love with me too. So we know that this laying this weight aside so that we can stir up our faith is not easy. It's not something that we, we can easily do. But we're going to focus on Jesus. We're going to focus on the word. Um, and we can read in, in, in Hebrews 11, the chapter right before what we read. It talks about all the people who had faith. And not all of them saw the fulfillment of the promise. But they believed God. We have to believe him. We have to believe that what is in here, this is our instructions for getting through this life and being made ready to live with him in eternity, to rule and reign with him in eternity. But that's not the only thing that we have faith in. We have faith also in the prophetic word. We have faith in the word that he speaks to us by his spirit. A lot of what I've been sharing today, because I have this relationship with him and he talks to me. I don't know if it's audible. To me, it's as audible as what you say because it's real. I, I mean, I just hear him. And he says, if you're my people, you'll hear my voice. So I do believe that if you are a follower of Jesus, that you have ears that can hear him, we might need to get rid of distractions. We might need to quiet some of the noises. We might, might need to just really be still in order to hear what it is that he wants to say, but we can hear him. So those things he speaks into my spirit, well, those, th that's the word of God also. It's not just written. And here's where we have to be careful, and we have to take everything that we hear from someone else before God to see, is this you? And does it line up? Is it, is it true, Lord? Is it true what you're saying? Because he'll also speak through others. Okay? Um, so those are some of the things that we can do to strengthen our faith. So there, there was this movie that um, I want to just quickly... Sh I don't want to give too much of it away, but it was a true story and about this young kid... And he so badly wanted to do this job. And I don't want to say what it is because I don't want to spoil it. It's a great movie. I loved it. But, oh, he wanted to do this thing so bad it's all he could think about. And he would play doing this thing. And, and he drew a picture of it and he gave it to his teacher. And um, life goes on. He still never forgets about it. It's always in the forefront of his mind and on his heart. He really loved this thing, okay? And, um, yeah, so he, he graduates high school. He's working. His parents were farmers, and he's working in the field with them. And he meets the girl he's going to marry. They get married. They have a house full of kids. <laughs> And he still never forgets this thing. In fact, he puts in an application every year. He puts in the application to do this career, this job, to do this dream that God put in him. And he gets this re rejection letter back every single time. And he puts them in a briefcase. And at one point, it's like he's got more than 20 rejection letters and he could have given up. And there were times that he wanted to give up. There were times that he really, really wasn't sure anymore if it was worth it. And he, but he just kept putting those letters out every single year. And his wife encouraged him. I'm telling you, it matters who's around you. It does matter. And when God's placed something on the inside of you, every single one of us has a purpose. Every single one of us has a calling, a mission, something that God put in you. It's wrote on your DNA, and it needs to, it is God's desire, we'll put it that way, that we accomplish that thing with his help. And he said not only that, but that he gave us everything we would ever need 
It's already been provided for us to accomplish that thing. So this guy never let go of it. And then um, he, even t he even studied what other people that were accepted were doing that got them in and not him. What do they have? So he studied the life of others who were successful. That's another thing we can do. When you know that you've got a call, you know there's something that God's called you to, and you're getting rejections or what, you know, that you just don't give up. You keep going. Study. Study to show yourself approved. Prepare, prepare, prepare like you're going to do it. And this guy never stopped. So he, he ended up traveling to Russia and learning Russian. He learned scuba diving so that he could build his stamina and strength. Um, he went and got degrees and masters, and he became an engineer. And he just did all these things. And then he went in person. He wasn't going to take no. He absolutely knew. There will be doors that are going to close in front of you. But I'm saying to you, what did God tell you? Yeah, that's right. What did God tell you? Don't let it go. I gave this word at the women's meeting, but I'm going to do it again because I just heard it. There are people who you heard something or God placed something down on the inside of you, and it's been a long, long time. And maybe you thought it was over, that you missed it. Maybe you thought you did something wrong. And caused it to get aborted. Maybe you thought it was too late. You're too old. But this is what I heard him say. It's not dead. It just needs to be stirred up. <coughs> it's not dead. It just needs to be stirred up. In Hebrews 10, 38, it says, My righteous ones will live by faith or by their faithfulness. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away, who shrinks back, who backs off from that thing, from discouragement, from fear, whatever it is that caused you to back off away from that thing that God told you. You need to get back up, wipe yourself off, and get back in the game. Get back in the race. It's not dead. You're not dead, so it's not dead. What can cause us to shrink back? Fear. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection. Fear of not knowing how to do it. Fear of not being good enough. Weariness. Come on. How many of us have felt some weariness? We've been given everything we know. We've been working so hard and we're just tired and we just don't care anymore. Come on. Unbelief. You just don't believe it. Maybe you did it one time, but it didn't come to pass. And things didn't turn out the way that I thought that they would. Things didn't happen the way that I thought they would. And I just don't care anymore. If this is any of you, you would just write these things down because we're going to deal with them. Sin. Discouragement. These things will cause us to get stuck. They'll paralyze us where we can't move no matter how bad we want to. So we got to get rid of these things. Hebrews 11.6 says that it is impossible to please God without faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So when I read this, I read it out loud. Because when I'm reading it out loud, it's going into my ear gate. Now I'm hearing it, and my faith is growing, and my inner man is being strengthened. So it's speaking out loud those prophetic promises that God has made to you. You know you heard him. Begin to speak it out loud. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I hear. I don't care what anyone else says. I don't care what I feel. This is what God says. This is how Jesus overcame. He said, it is written. It is written. He used the written word, 
But he also heard him in the baptism. He heard the father speak over him and say, this is my beloved son. He heard it. He heard it. And we can speak those things into existence. Again, I'm going to remind you, we're in the decade of the pay, the mouth. We must speak what we hear God saying. It's imperative to moving forward. It's imperative to breaking down some strongholds. It's imperative in our warfare battle against darkness that wants to stop us and prevent us from doing that which God has placed in us. So we must speak the sword of the word, the word of the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> Second Peter, chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and his excellence, not because of my goodness, not because of your goodness, because there's no one good but him, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you. Another way to put that, these are the promises that help you be able to stand. These are the promises that will keep you. These are the promises that will carry you. These are the promises that will strengthen you. These are the promises that will make you well able to share in his nature and to escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to his promises. Make every effort means we're going to have to work at it. We're going to have to work at it. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence. Do what's right, even if it hurts. Moral excellence with knowledge. You know that salvation is knowing God? That releases the favor of God. It's to know God. And to know his ways. Knowledge with self-control. Self-control with patient endurance. So that we can stand when you've done all that you know to do. You stand. And patient endurance with godliness. Godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more that you grow like this. The more productive and the more useful you're going to be in your knowledge of the Lord. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. You're not who you were pre-Jesus. You're a new creature. You're a new creation. You're not who you were. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those that God has called and chosen. Do these things, listen to this, and you will never fail or fall away. Do these things and you'll never shrink back. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, it says, Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. This is what grows your faith. For what's coming, our faith must grow. We must know that if I lose my job, if I lose everything I have, if everyone turns against me, that God is well able, he loves me, he loves me. He loves me enough that he came out of heaven for me and for you. He laid down his deity and he became a man for you, for me. He loves me and he'll stop at nothing. He will provide for me. He will protect me. And I don't need to to depend that it has to come from another source. He can do that in whatever way he wants to. If my faith isn't strong... The first time that a wave comes, I'm moved. 
the sand shifts and I move and I collapse. And woe is me and then I become all negative because something didn't go exactly the way I thought it should go. We've got to get stronger than that. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. He says, if you love me, you will obey me. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. And then he even told Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you. So he even validates the prophetic words spoken over you. We're not to despise that. That can be very, very powerful. It's helped me stay the course when I thought maybe I was wrong. But you see, he confirmed it, that I wasn't the only one hearing something. He spoke through others, and there was a call on my life. This is why he didn't let me jump out of that car. There's a whole lot of people that wouldn't have been touched by God if I would have jumped out of the car. I wouldn't have my children and grandchildren who came bearing gifts. Thank you. (laughs) I feel spoiled. (laughs) Based on the prophetic words spoken about you uh, earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's battle. So there's a purpose for those words. There's a purpose when he moves on someone's heart. There's a purpose when he moved in my heart and he said they're stuck. You see, I felt his heart. I felt his heart for you. And there was so much pain And he said, they're hurting, and they're stuck, and they can't get free. And tell them, I'm coming. I'm coming to save them. I'm coming to help them. And it was almost like Mighty Mouse. I don't know this. I'm probably (laughs) dating myself. Here I come to save the day. (laughs) Mighty Mouse. (laughs) That's our Jesus. So, you know, um, stirring up faith. There are two others. I said we were going to stir up fire. But I'm looking at the time, and I'm going to have to do it another time. So maybe I get to come back and finish it. But there's a fire that he desires to stir up in us. Fire of intimacy and passion for Jesus. How many of us have lost that first love? It's very, very important that it be rekindled now. Now is the time to recognize if you don't have that same love that you had for him in the beginning. Now's the time, and it starts with being honest. It starts by being honest with yourself. It starts by being honest with him, and then it starts by, and then we cry out, please help me. Help me, God. Help me. And then whatever he tells you to do, we do it. You know, um, and the third thing that I was hoping to stir up is the gifts, that he's placed gifts within us. But I feel so strong, and I, I want to honor the time, the time that we have. But I do feel strong that we want to do some, we want to do um, a little bit of ministry time. Um, a time to deal with some of the things that have us stuck. And... Um, Holy Spirit, I am asking that even now, and and if I could get the worship team back up, and just, um, we'll start with maybe something just soft, some music. But if you are dealing with sin, and you know it's sin, whether it's a habit, or whether you're dabbling with things that you absolutely know that you have no business dabbling in, Are you willing to say, Jesus, I'm giving it over to you today? Are you willing to repent? And repent is not just saying, I'm sorry. It is not enough to tell somebody you're sorry and then continue doing whatever it is that you want to do. It's not okay. That is not repentance. Repentance is being so heartbroken that you hurt this person and you know what you did was wrong and says from this moment on with your help I'm not going to do this anymore and like I said with the 
addictions, I had to tell him, I don't know how to stop, but I choose you. I choose you, Lord. Please help me. That's humility. And I'm here to tell you that he meets you there. So repentance is I'm sorry, but then you don't stop there. You turn and you begin to move in a different direction. You begin to do something new. You don't continue in that thing. That could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be tobacco. It could be things that hurt your body. Too much food and gluttony. (laughs) Sexual perversion. Pornography. Gambling. Fear. Anger. Rage unforgiveness, bitterness, and the list could go on and on. So I am asking, Holy Spirit, that even now you would begin to speak. And if there is any area of sin or bad habits that are destroying your temple, would you please just show us? You've tried and you've tried and you just can't get free. You're stuck. Help me, God. Write it down. Write it down. It's time to deal with it. Perhaps it's an area of lukewarmness. You've had trouble focusing on the word when you read it. You stay focused. You have trouble staying focused on Jesus in this conversation in your prayer time. You have trouble letting go in freedom as you worship. You've lost your fire. You've lost your zeal. You've lost your passion for Jesus. Maybe there's just too much going on, too much pleasure, too many distractions, too much busyness. I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this. Remember Martha? The love for the things of this world, its treasures and pleasures. Perhaps you're struggling with a lack of love for other people. That everything you think about, it's about me. What do I get out of this? What's in it for me? What's in it for my family? And I can't seem to get past my family. Well, I'd say you're stuck. Because the kingdom is way bigger than me and mine. It's us. And remember, we leave no one behind. Not one family member. If you have family members that are not saved, I encourage you, until the day that you see Jesus, you don't stop crying out. Not one. Not one to be lost for. Not one. Not one. Jesus, not one. I know that's your heart. You said it in John 17. I'm standing on that word. Not one, Lord. Not one. But that every one of the jewels for your crown, you earned the reward, Lord Jesus. You earned it, Lord Jesus. So get the fullness of your reward. And that includes every one of my family members. Every one. And not one left behind. And I'm not going to move out of that place. I'm not going to move from it. Cry out for it day and night. What about the work of the ministry to which you've been called to? Whether it's in the marketplace, whether it's in your home, whether it's here serving the body, whatever that work that God has called you to. Have you grown lackadaisical in it? Have you grown weary? Have you gotten lazy or slothful? Are you more concerned with you and yours? And you don't really care too much about what's going on outside of your little circle. You know you have gifts. Everybody has at least one, but probably multiple. But how much are you using them to help other people? If you're not, I would probably say you're stuck. How long has it been since you've really done something to help someone else? Even if it means that you might be a little inconvenienced for it. Lukewarm. Worldly focus. Perhaps fear of man, that you're afraid if I do this thing, if I get up and give this prophetic word, what are they going to say about me? What if they throw me out? What if they throw me in jail? What if they beat me up? What if they kill me? Do you still choose Jesus? If you lose everything you own, do you still choose him? It's going to hurt. It's not an easy walk. But oh my gosh, is it worth it? So I want you to just remember what has God spoken to you? Maybe we're stirring up our faith. Faith comes by hearing. What has God spoken to you? So you've taken the time. If there's any area that He's 
showed you that you need to repent, hang on to that. I want you to take a moment and I want you to remember. Take some time, remember. What has God said to you? get out of it. 
and it's barren and it's dry. Pull them out, Lord God. Pull them out. I'm asking you, Lord, to speak so clearly that they will absolutely know this is what God said. And they're going to hang on to that with all they've got. And they're going to begin to speak what you're saying. They're going to begin to speak it. Love causes fear to be expelled out of our lives. 